Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sebelius and FamilyTravelPhotos.com. In this episode, I'll continue a series of videos to prepare you for your first flight with the unique Typhoon H with an overview of your pre-flight. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you complete a safe and successful first flight with your unique Typhoon H. These episodes apply to the Typhoon H and the Typhoon H Pro. Let's get started with Typhoon H Pre-Flight. For your first flight, pick an open field that's free of obstacles and other people. It's a good idea to check weather conditions. You need to know if wind, temperature, rain, or other factors might influence your flight. Personally, I won't fly the Typhoon H if the wind speed is above 15 miles per hour, if it's raining at all, or if the temperature is below 32 degrees. You can set your own standards, but you want to check the weather before you head out to fly. Once you arrive at your launch site and unpack the aircraft, remove the gimbal lock. It's important that you remove this before you turn on power. This plastic shell protects the gimbal during transportation but it can actually damage the gimbal if you leave it on the aircraft when you power it up. Time to put in the media card. Hold the camera gently without touching the lens and rotate it until the media card slot is accessible. Insert the media card into the slot with the label facing backwards. The card can only go in one way, so if it doesn't click into place, flip the card around. Push the card down until it stays in all the way. Now you can install the flight battery. Slide the battery in, label up. Push it in firmly until it's all the way in. It's a good idea to calibrate your accelerometer before your first flight. You should also calibrate the accelerometer after every firmware upgrade or if you notice the aircraft isn't hovering properly. While calibrating the accelerometer, go ahead and calibrate your gimbal as well. Both of these calibrations can be done indoors. The important thing is to make sure you're doing them on a level surface. You should also calibrate the compass before your first flight and after every firmware update. You won't need to do it again unless you travel a good distance from the point where you last calibrated. I'll provide links below to videos that show how to calibrate the accelerometer, gimbal, and compass in greater detail. One last step while your aircraft and transmitter are booted up and connected. Hit System Settings, then choose OK at the warning message. Click on Other Settings, then find the switch for Advanced Mode. If Advanced Mode is turned off, the aircraft is extremely limited in how far or high it will fly. By default, Advanced Mode is turned off when it ships from the factory. If you're a beginner, leave it that way. If you have some flight experience, turn Advanced Mode on. You can activate Advanced Mode whenever you like. Once you've turned it on, it will stay activated from that point on unless you shut it off yourself. Your next step is to install the propellers. Notice that the propellers have two different colors of rings. This indicates that they're an A propeller or a B propeller. A props have a black ring around the mounting aperture and the A prop shaft has a black top. B props have a silver ring and the B-prop shaft has a white top. Remember to put an A propeller only on an A propeller shaft and the same for the B propeller. You can't put the wrong type of prop on a prop shaft, so if the propeller isn't mounting properly, make sure you're matching A to A or B to B. Place the prop on the prop shaft and align it by applying gentle pressure as you turn the prop until you feel it go down against the springs on the prop shaft. Slide it all the way down, then rotate it counterclockwise with an A-prop and clockwise with a B-prop until you feel and hear a slight click. I always give the props a test wiggle to make sure they're clicked fully into place. We're almost ready for flight. Now it's time to inspect the aircraft. This is a good habit for every flight. Inspect your propellers to make sure they aren't chipped or cracked. Look in your motors for any leaves, grass, or other debris. Look over the aircraft for any damage. 
check to make sure your motor arms are fully up and clicked into place. It wasn't in this case. This inspection takes 15 seconds, but it could keep you from having an accident and destroying your drone. Your pre-flight is complete. We're ready to move on to the next video, a walkthrough of your first flight with the unique Typhoon H. I hope you found this video to be helpful. I've posted another video that explains the steps you should take before your first flight with the Typhoon H, which is linked here. Be sure to watch that before taking off on your first flight. You can help me in return by hitting the like button below and subscribing. Your comments and feedback in the comment section below are also greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.